Robbie Storm on Zard tonight. You have to be pretty patient. Yeah, look, he sort of Barry Seven's one of them George, I've got to be patient as you can or or make dictated early. So we sort of went for the first option and it paid dividends. Your thoughts going into the race? It, no no thought of grabbing hold and and getting off the inside? Yeah, look, there, there definitely was thoughts of that. Um, I spoke to Connections and Kerry Ann before the race and just on paper, they didn't seem like there was going to be any point, especially over a mile around Maitland, where they were going to slow up enough for me to get to the chair without doing a power of work. So um, I sort of locked myself into punching through pretty early. Um, I think it's very tactical, these small tracks. And like if you look at the other way and I dragged right off the arm, I would have ended up in a heap of traffic. Would have, that horse got caught three wide the trip. Would have had to do a lot of work to get anywhere near the leaders and covering that extra distance, no matter how good you are or how short price favourite you are in the race, it, it brings you undone. So I genuinely like to go for that patient version and sometimes you work, sometimes you don't. So you just got to be patient and see what happens. When you got off the inside, did, was it the race all over? Yeah, as soon as he got into the clear, he's such a beautiful horse. He just travelled into the bridle so nice up onto Fond Designs back, turning out of the back, and it was just a matter of getting him out safe and probably getting him around the last turn. Sort of, It's always a worry. He races a lot of his career at Menangle, and to go from working at Menangle to racing at Menangle to the shock of being on a, such a tight little track like this, which is great for racing and great for spectators, sometimes can bring him undone. So I just didn't want to let him slide around the turn. I just sort of wanted him to let him find his feet, and he extended nice when he straightened up. Where does he go now? Uh, he'll go back to Menangle now, probably next Saturday. Um, probably a bit disappointing. I, I sort of give him a good blow and done a really good job last prep and probably should have had him in for three or four runs more before the uh, Group 2 final for Ramos last fortnight ago. Probably just two or three runs short. and He went really good, but would have liked to have two more runs under his belt. You mentioned the tight track here at Maitland. Um, you do a lot of your driving at Menangle. What, what's it like coming back to a smaller track? It takes you back to your early days at Bulleye? Yeah, you forget. You definitely forget. That's what Blake Fitzpatrick said to me in the race before. He said, you don't realise how you forget how tight these turns are. And they are. They're, they're really tight. But they're, um, as you can see, there's plenty of people here tonight and it's a great atmosphere. And you're going down the straight and the crowd's right on you. So it's, it's great for racing. Congratulations with the win. Well done. Thank you. Well, Luke, that was super impressive. Kept under wraps tonight. Yeah, he's a lovely horse, Hazy. And it, you know, we we're really confident going into tonight and he raced super. The tactics going into the race, you, you went back at the start and then made a very early move. Was that always the plan? Yeah, I just I thought I couldn't cross um, Cha-Ching Cha-Ching for speed early, so I just thought I'd just pop across and not get in that first furlong of burning up. And then when the dust settled, get <laughs> get around him and get up outside him. And I thought we'd probably have to make it a pretty genuine, you know, last 1,200 metres if we could outstay him, and it worked out good. He's obviously been a talented horse from the day that he stepped foot on a racetrack, but he, he looks to be enjoying racing in Australia. Yeah, he's always been a top horse, um, Greg. Like, um, big thanks to Mark and Natalie for leaving him over here and all the owners. And, you know, he, he played second field to follow the stars his whole two-year-old season and, um, you know, and then even Mark's other good three-year-olds at three. And, you know, I think he, he's... he's performances have been super but he's just run into a couple better than him and you know it's been good for him to get to Sydney and have a few kills and tonight was really good. I spoke to you on this night 12 months ago we we're talking about all eyes on us and you're talking about the chariots of fire with him and, and he got there is that the plans with this bloke? Yeah he'll have a freshen up and go to the heats of the chariots now you know it'll be a lot harder race obviously but he'll have a crack at it. What about this small track racing uh, I've spoken to a few of the drivers about it tonight you probably forget about it because you, you do all the driving on the on the big track, but it is exciting to, to come back and, and race on these smaller tracks. It is for sure. It's um you know and to see the crowd here tonight and you know the atmosphere is fantastic and there's a place for it in the sport and I, I'll be honest, I, I love Menangle and racing at Menangle and um but it's it is nice to come here for these series and you know we'll we'll try and set a horse for this series every year. Mate, congratulations with the win tonight. Well done. Thank you. Pete, to win a race on inner city pace night, you'd ha have to be happy with that. Yeah, I'm stoked, Hazy, you know, especially being my own also train here and um, Dad grew up here in Maitland and trained on the track, so no, it's terrific. Good win too. Um, he was getting tired at the end, but he had a, a big lead turning for home. Yeah, yeah, he actually got the tugs up at the second quarter and uh, went a lot quicker than what I wanted to do. And But he, he done well to hang on, but he was very tight on the line. I was waiting for that winning pace to come, that's for sure. He's had four runs back this time in. He's won two of them. So you, you got him in career best form at the moment? Yeah, he's sort of constantly improved from a two-year-old. He won, he won a two-year-old race and he's three-year-olds and he's just got a, better every time, a bit better every time. But um, yeah, he's been handy. You know, he's no star, but he's been good to us. So. He, he, pays, he pays the bills. What do you do with him now? What sort of race can you look for now? Oh, probably, you know, when the Menangle heat and country heat and final start back up, um, 
um, I was thinking of Tenworth, but you know, with the heat up there, he's, he's not a great horse through summer. He tends to dehydrate and that. So I think I'll just see, keep him in the easier races around here. And yeah, maybe one of them in Angle Heat and finals down the track. But we'll just poke along in the races we can win. You know. Great to see such a big crowd out here on uh, inner city pace night. Yeah, it's terrific. Like every year, someone says, "Oh, you know, I get a big crowd." But when it was sort of earlier this year, I, I dead set had me doubts. But it's you know, you get over the back straight after about race three, and they just they just come here. You know, it's it's terrific atmosphere. You know, it's it's great. Yeah. Congratulations tonight. Well done. Yeah, thanks a lot. Tough. Brad, another winner on the night. You must be happy with uh, with perfect energy. Uh, yeah, he's, he's um, he come a long way. Uh, we didn't ever think he was going to race, but now yeah, he's come. He's won three races now, so yeah, he's, he's going pretty good. His run last week was was probably better than tonight's. He got hammered, and yeah, he finished second. But uh, yeah, tonight's run, he, he was pretty good. He uh, fought back like a like a cage lion. He he looks to be a, a horse that's suited by um, a track where he can get to the front. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lead. Yeah, just got a lead. Now, just tell us a bit about your career. I think that's your 53rd winner. You must be extremely happy with how everything's been going. Oh, yeah, everything's been going good. Um, had a few for the season now. I've got like, a lot of people behind me, owners, trainers, yeah, and especially my dad and like, every family and that. So, yeah, everyone's and, helping. And, and where do you want to go? Do you, do you want to make it a, a full-time career? I'd love to. I really would. And what, is, and what do your parents say about that? Not happy. <laughs> So are they telling you that you've got to go out and, and get a trade or, or are you, you trying to go straight into the uh, the racing caper full time? Well, that's their exact words. should go and get a trade. But nah, I'll, I'll, I'll do the trots. Well, mate, 53 winners. You're only, what, 17? Congratulations with uh, how far you've come and, and well done with the double tonight. Thanks a lot. Nathan, nice to get a, a winner in the last with Benny's a virgin. Yeah, it is lovely getting a winner. You know, like I said in my little speech out there that... Um, the last, I think, the last three meetings, I've driven a winner in the last race every time. So um, I think the last one was on take the cash for Ray Harkness again. So um, I enjoy this little track, you know. It's a, you know, I moved from Dubbo and worked my way up here. Uh, moved into Lauren and Chains and Mick Formosa stables and just gone back doing my electrical trade and that. Um, just trained a couple of my own. But, uh, you know, home little track now to me where Dubbo was home back then. So, uh, you know, working horses on here every day and helping Ray out on weekends, fast working and driving them at the trials, you know. A bloke like him, he's always on us with an opinion and I'm very thankful. Thank you for the opportunity. What did he What did he say going into the race? Did he tell you to be aggressive? He didn't say be aggressive, you know. Last run thought I might have flattened him. He went 53, uh, 56, 9 or something behind uh, Gotta Go Gold, which was a runner-up in uh, the Gold Crown last year. So, um, you know, the real instructions were just go out and do your best and have fun, you know. Um, you know, I went to the pegs at there at a stage and I probably thought, oh, what did I do that for? And I was bashing myself and the next minute they were all together and I had the chance to pop off. And halfway down you can see the femisaur board and it was on a bit of an angle and I seen the 232s. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to see what he can do because Ray said to hang on and have fun. So, you know, I just let him go at the bell and you know, he worked up to him and I caught the leaders napping and the 400, uh, I think, to the inside of me, Dean Aces went a bit rough and, you know, he just kicked clear. He got a bit tired on the line whether I pushed him too early, but um, other than that, yeah, he's a nice horse. Well, that's win number one at start number 13. Congratulations with a winner on Inner City Pace Night. Big crowd and uh, gives you a bit of a thrill for, for, a, uh, for a win. Yeah, it does. Uh, put one in the Inner City Heats last week of my own for an owner and uh, unfortunately we didn't make it. We got into a little bit of trouble, but uh, hopefully I have a team um, next year bigger and stronger and uh, have maybe get that final runner. You know, Luke McCarthy is always going to have nice horses for those kind of races and Shane Tritton had a very nice one this year, unfortunately. But... Um, I know you just got to place them where you think you can win races. At the end of the day, with this new handicapping system, it's you got to place your horses to where you can win. So I don't know where the next step for Benny's a virgin. Whether uh, Ray wants to go down to Tenworth and set him for a race there, or we go back to Newcastle next week and and go from there. So, mate, congratulations for the win tonight. Well done. Not a worries. Thank you very much, Freddie.